Mansfield today and welcome to what we're calling Studio 3. Now you may remember if you followed this show since we started, which even less than a year ago, um, we started with the whole panoramic, pa pa panoramic view outside the studio. And then our um, designers, Jean-Pierre and Rick, came to us and they said, too noisy. There's just too much clutter in the background. And we need something more sophisticated and we need something more uncluttered. So we went to our second set, which was Studio 2, technically. And that was, that was very sort of, it was, and it still is, by the way, because we'll still be using that studio um, Monday to Friday. But they then came to me and they said, we need another studio, not nearly as big as the others, not nearly as big, don't, don't get yourself into a gufufu, because that's how they talk. Um, they said, nice, tiny, warm, intimate. They said, we want to show the cuddly side of Jeremy, the teddy bear. So here's the teddy bear, darling. You see. Um, I, I am a bit worried about this wall. I, I, don't, I don't mind the texture and all the rest of it. I think it's just too white. I don't know about you. You can, send, you can send me your design details if you want to. Info at Mansfield Today. That's with the number two. Info at mansfieldtoday.com. You can send them and I'll pass them on to um, Jean-Pierre and, to, and to, uh, uh, um, to Rick. But to me, this is just too white. It's bland. And I don't like bland. It needs to... If you're wanting softness, this needs to be, have a little bit of color to it. I don't know about you. Also, these cushions. They, they're sort of very old-style Afrocentric. I, I think we need something a little bit more bright, a bit more zhuzh. Um, but other than that, I quite like it. So, so basically, our weekday shows will come from Studio 2, which is the, the sort of sophisticated-looking one. I didn't know we did sophisticated stuff on this show, actually. And then the weekday shows will come from this couch, the, or as Rick calls it, a settee. A settee, yeah. The slag. What is that, Rick? There's a settee, Jeremy. Um, so this will come from... Oh, they also put a, um, a table in on the side there, over there, you see. And I said to them, well, what's that for? Because it's just a table sitting there, and I hate clutter. And they said, no, that's in case um, Mel or, or Len or Reichardt, who do the, the, the gaming show, have something that they want to show you, then there's somewhere that, where they can put it, and when they need to show it to you, they pick it up and then they show it to you. And, then, and I said, okay, but while it's not being used, we need something on it. And Rick went, oh, my goodness, don't worry, I'll go sort it out and dash it out. And he came back with, and it's nice to see it back again, the microphone. Now, that microphone is an original. I don't know where Karen, my partner, found it, but that is an original that was used when they started the BBC, BBC Radio. Um, and that, those are the microphones that they used in BBC House. It's one of them. And um, it still actually works. It's been adapted, and it still actually works. You can plug it in, and it does the same thing it did when it was used way back when, when they used to go, hello and good evening. It is 8 o'clock and this is the BBC coming live to you from London. And they were sitting there in their bow ties. And that was on radio. And they had bow ties. That's how they used to broadcast in their bow tie. It was only the right thing to do. One never knows what will happen. So uh, this is Studio C. Quite like it, actually. It's got a nice little feel to it. And the couch is actually very comfortable. Where's the other studio? 
doesn't really help when you're in the middle of the interview and you suddenly fall asleep, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, that's absolutely fine, sir. Yes, Mr. President. And as far as any other changes that you're thinking of making in come, Ach, but he's used to that. It happens in Parliament all the time. Anyway, right. What am I going to tell you? Yeah, so uh, Rick um, Jean-Pierre, a little bit more color here, please. That, that, that's the only thing that's worrying me. And let's see what we can do with these cushions. And so see if we can do something else with them. Okay. Now, speaking of pansies, Mel is at um, Lifestyle Garden Center. So she's in her absolute element as well. Um, and she's looking around because they've been having some sort of fear or something. I, I, I don't know about these things. I just, I just present. I, I know nothing more. So Mel, Mel, help me. Help me. Help me here out of, out of the madness of Studio C. Melanie Walker. Hey Jeremy, thanks for letting me get out and about into the gardens. I mean, that is really the way to go because gardening is pretty much an outdoor thing unless you're a millennial and you only have indoor space. But uh, we've come here to Lifestyle Home Garden because the students at Lifestyle College are putting together the show gardens. And why are show gardens so, well, important? I'd like to say they're important. Well, it's because it gets to show you what you can do in a really small space. And seeing as many of us are working with much smaller spaces these days, it really is necessary to see how you can still have great garden design and what you can plant in a small space as well. So I've come to talk to Michael Rickoff and he's going to tell us all about it. Michael, tell me a bit about the show gardens here this year. Yeah, this year <clears throat> we're focusing on living spaces. So every single space that we've got in this garden is about uh, how to actually live outdoors. And it's not, as, it's not as we used to do it, you know, when we're saying there's an integration between your architecture and your garden. And we're actually saying that your garden is a place that you can go into and you can enjoy yourself. And like for instance, we're sitting in what's, what this year is an outdoor kitchen. We have an outdoor bath, we have an outdoor shower, we have an outdoor fire pit. So you can go there, you can you can basically have a whole family out mm -hmm. in the garden. Okay, so how many, sorry, I'm just worried about that noise in the background. That's the track. Okay, that's better. And I said really cool, so nice. And you've also got a whole thing, we, we talk about Afrocentric garden design and mm -hmm. how we shouldn't be taking our cues that much from overseas. We're also taking what we've got here in South Africa. You've got an Afro-Zen garden this year, what's that all about? Yeah, you know we've gone beyond Afrocentric to last year, you'll recall we went um, Afro-Chic. Yeah. Uh, this year we've gone Afro-Zen, which is it's really a crossover between a meditation space but with an African vibe in it. So we try to keep it minimalist. We try to, to keep bring in the bonsais, but we've got um, our own species of bonsai our trees in the garden. So we try to say there can be a cross pollination, and it doesn't always have to be a cross pollination of Afrocentric and Eurocentric. It can also be Eastern Zen uh, cross, cross pollinating with the Afrocentric. Michael, when it comes to indigenous plants, do you find that people are becoming more um, easy with using them rather than like always having exotics and wanting a country style garden? Yeah, I think it's actually the industry pushing it a lot. I think a lot of the landscapers are becoming sensitive to it. The garden centers are becoming sensitive uh, to uh, indigenous or uh, endemic plants. But also I think that people are starting to find out that, that our plants are sexy. You know, we have great plants in this country. Whereas I remember growing up, it was always considered to be the poor cousin. Uh, that, that plant range and now we're basically saying we're swinging away we're not doing away with exotics but we're getting much more responsible and and, and much more amenable to having uh, indigenous plants in our gardens so michael which is your favorite part of these gardens i mean i have i know which my favorite is yeah you know it's, it's always it's always a difficult question to answer because i don't want people to think i don't love any part of the garden i love all the parts of my garden but I'm particularly fond this year of the um, Afro Zen Garden and I'm particularly fond, I must say, of the garden we call Puddles which has all these circular spaces and every circular space recommends a room and that's where we have our bath and our shower and some really crazy ideas in that garden so, you know, whilst I love every single part of the garden I mean, you can't hate the Mondrian Garden, for instance and you can't hate the garden you're sitting in, for instance this one called Let Us Eat but there are gardens that seem to pop for me and, and make a bigger statement than others
So Michael, tell me about this garden. I think this is this is the one we were talking about earlier. It's called Puddles. And the reason it's called Puddles is got all these like, circles, these uh, intersecting circles around the garden. Each one of these circles is on different a different level and they all represent a different living space. So this entire garden is a full range of living spaces from fire pit to shower and bath uh, to viewing deck and, and then right to the uh, um, I would say the leisure area where you can, you can lie on recliners and just have your GMT later late in the afternoon. Why is it that garden design is actually important when it comes to gardens, especially spore gardens? You have, to, you have to literally plan your space. So when I say literally plan your space, I mean you have to put it on a plan. I don't think you have to necessarily go to the nth degree, but you have to have some idea of what fits into the garden from an aesthetic point of view, but, but really importantly from a practical point of view. You know, so how much space have I got to occupy? Do I have inner space that I can use in the garden? When I say inner space, I mean, you know, what occupy, can I hang things in the garden? Can I, can I walk around the garden? Will I be comfortable? Will it become claustrophobic if I put too much stuff? And I think we've got a habit of being trolley designers where we go into a, a garden center and we just put stuff on a trolley and hope that we'll find a place for it to fit. Um, it makes much more sense to actually think it through, um, to, to actually measure dimensions of things, measure plant masses, measure plant types and make sure the plant types not only hydro zone well together, but look good together as well from a textural point of view. So there is planning and thinking up front, I think. What is the average space of these little gardens here? Because I mean, a lot of people, they've got like about a three by four, sometimes only three by four meters. You're talking about gardens here that we have that are three by four gardens. Some of them are annexes to other gardens. And we have one in the garden called Reflections, which is a patio. It has a little annex to it, which is very small. I mean, it's, it's probably about nine or 10 square meters, which is tiny. But if you go into that garden, it has a lovely, comfortable embracing feel to it. It's, and as I say, it's not claustrophobic. So that was just a bit of careful planning about what can go into the garden. And I think importantly for most people, it's about budget as well. Don't waste money, you know, spend it wisely. Well, talking about budget, um, how much would a garden like the one behind you? I'm, I'm particularly in love with the grassland behind you, mainly because I think the mural is just so fantastic. To do something like that, with that kind, you wouldn't do this kind of planting, so you wouldn't use quite as many plants if you were planting your own garden, would you? You would use probably half, um, because in show gardens, of course, we plant a little bit fuller so that the gardens have immediate impact. But obviously, you would be smart to look at the mature size of the plant and allow for the mature size of the plant. So maybe a half to even maybe a third of the plants we plant here. So if I'm looking at a garden that, from a show garden point of view, would cost me 20,000 rand, you're probably looking more like 10,000 rand, 8,000 rand at home. So when it comes to gardening for the bees, it doesn't mean that you have to have a beehive at home. You also have little bug hotels, things for solitary bees, but the main thing about having a garden for bees is what you plant for it and for them, because they need to be able to get as much nectar as they can to go home and create a happy home. This is the tiniest, tiniest little nook. I love this. It's literally about three by four squares. And that's all you need. Sometimes planting just comes about beautifully by being plonked down in the middle of nowhere. Look at this. Who would have thought? <laughs> Red and purple it's together. It's, it's a whole feature. <laughs> Thank you.
Michael, so when is this all going to be open to the public to come and have a look? It's open as we speak. Wow, so, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think you've got to come and see the gardens if you, if you can. Um, you know, looking at the gardens on TV or in a magazine or whatever the case may be is one thing, but being in the garden is something else. It's a way to experience mm. the garden. And, you know, we've said it before, haven't we? It's, it's one thing to stand outside of the garden and look at it. It's another thing to be inside the garden. Got to be in the it. garden. Yeah. Got to come through and actually get involved and feel it and see it and the dimensions of it. And the perspective as well, it gives you a totally different perspective. So if you're in Johannesburg, please do yourself a favor, come and have a look and see what the Lifestyle College students have been doing. If you're not, of course, you can see all the wonderful pictures I've been putting up for you. And uh, whatever you do, just take some time, get out, go and commune with nature. And no matter how big your space, create a garden and just go out and enjoy it. We'll catch you again next time. Well, there you have it. If you want to know what small space gardening is all about, well, you'll have to get down to the Lifestyle Home Garden and come and check out these small gardens. Right now, though, it's so hot. Jeremy, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take off all my kit and jump into the bath over here. I know it's going to frighten all the children, but I don't care. I'm hot and bothered. Actually, I'm not bothered. It's fantastic. I'm in a garden. What's better?